We have two things to do tonight. We have uh, what the fuck is wrong with you? Which is sadly very spoopy somehow. Where did the word spoopy come from? The internet. Like, why is it not spooky anymore? Because we've broken things. Like, I'm an old, I, I understand that I'm an old, but I don't know why it's no longer spooky. We've, we've broke, because we've broken, we've broken everything. Okay. I didn't know if that was like a combination of two words. No, no, it's because we broke everything. Okay. Um... Uh, someone saying a misprinted dollar store sign. And, th you know, th oh. because that's how the internet works. So they see something like that and they latch onto it and it's forever. I do have a favorite Myrtle Snow quote, but it's the, like, angry rant she gave this season about how much men suck and I don't have it memorized. But it's going on my headstone. <laughs> All right. Well, we, we've got, first we have what the fuck is wrong with you and then shortly thereafter we will have our best of the worst sexy so this is going to be two videos this week For the price of one yeah all right first let's let's get the uh the intro going i said let's get the intro i said let's oh computer oh i will i will reach in don't make me reach in there I literally can't. I could flip that door open and reach right inside that computer and yank shit out. Don't be a hater, dear. There we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the crazy. Fuck is Wrong With You. Now, first, we're going to start with some good news. They want you to put the head back on. He doesn't the want it. Strap is crushing my brain. The strap is crushing my brain. Sorry, he needs that for his job. Well, let's let's uh, let's get to some good news this week. Some actual factual good thing that happened. This is a follow up from last week. <gasps> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, as many 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 of you mo mo uh, replied to us about many many. many. The Kansas City Police Department could, in fact, find an asshole with a flashlight, both hands. <laughs> um, the, and this headline is fantastic. Giant colon found, but police say probe of his disappearance continues. <laughs> well done. The giant inflatable colon has been found. The mystery surrounding its theft continues. Uh, Kansas C City Police said Monday they had located the missing colon, a search that uh, a teaching tool that belongs to the Colon Cancer Coalition in a vacant house in the 7100 block of Virginia Avenue. So wait, I think this is the first time in history that a colon has been dumped instead of taking the dump. Um, I don't know. There's that Chuck Palahniuk story about the prolapse. Uh, uh, <laughs> you know the one? Yeah. Yeah. There was little information. If you read it, you hate me. Yeah. There's little information available how it uh, migrated a couple miles southeast uh, where it was stolen October 18th. No one's in custody yet. Investigation is continuing. So, yeah, it's it's a nice little world. How fucked up is it where it's so heartwarming that, don't worry, the police found the colon. Yeah. It's going to its home. They're sending the colon, the colon home. The colon is going back Oh. And if you just guys, I, I, the picture here is just that is fan. Th th just look at this goddamn thing. It's a happy colon. It's. I mean, uh, except for the cancer. That is. That's a nasty thing. Is what it is. Get that back in the in the shot so everyone can see it because that is that thing is just. There's like there's polyps and. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, in case you guys were worried, don't worry. We still live in a world where if someone steals a giant inflatable colon, it will be found. Cops are on it. Cops are on it. 
Now let's get into the spoopy stuff. Um, this comes from uh, spooky. Okay, fine. This comes from uh, Valdosta, Georgia, and this would th this is like y you would never set foot in this place ever the fuck again after this happened. No one would. This this is th they burn it to the ground and salt the earth. Hundreds of teeth found in downtown Valdosta Wall. I actually saw this one because I have a friend who's like, who collects teeth and skulls. So everybody sent this to her. I don't, it's a thing. A friend, huh? She likes teeth and she has a whole wall in her living room that's all skulls. Construction workers... Oh, for fuck's sake. Who did this? Oh, no. Amanda Usher. This is your fault. Construction workers bit off more than they could chew Tuesday when they discovered teeth buried in the building wall. Workers were readying commercial, uh, commercial space at the TB Converse building when they found an estimated 1,000 teeth buried in a second floor wall. That's a lot of teeth. Um, Dustin Merriman, project manager, confirmed crew members disposed of the teeth. So in case any of you weirdos went down there to look for free teeth, they're gone. Sorry. Um, from what we could tell, the building was the original location of Vincent and Barnes Drugstore, which turned into Barnes Drugs. They were on the first floor of the building. He said that according to our findings, above Vincent and Barnes was an office space on the second floor and lodging space on the third floor. A receipt recently retrieved by Valdosta dentist Dr. Pat Powell from an antique store shows a Dr. L.G. Humans dated June 12th, 1928. As far as the address, all it says is over Vincent Drug Store. He said the receipt was for a tooth extraction. So apparently there was a dentist up there just taking people's teeth and just throwing them in the wall. Yeah. Collecting his patient's teeth. Okay. Just holding on to a thousand teeth in the wall. Not I don't know how many of you watched the Sharp Objects miniseries on HBO mm. or read the book. Mm, yeah. But he could have made the lovely a lovely floor for the master. <laughs> Spoiler. Spoilers. No, I just it. No, you you have to break this down. He knew this wasn't normal behavior, because otherwise he would have had like a jar of teeth and be like, "Guess how many teeth are in the jar?" You get a lollipop. I mean, what do they do with them when they pull? Like they always ask me if I wanted the tooth they pulled out. I they did that to me too, and I'm like, God, no! Why would I and do if with you it? Say no. What do you do with it? They dispose of it as a biohazard. Once you clean it, it's not, though. <laughs> yes, but pretty much any biomedical waste is, is supposed to be disposed of as a biohazard. Yeah. I mean, even if, they, even if you, like, you know, have to have your hand removed or something, they don't, like, keep the hand. They don't clean it off. I guess unless, they'll leave that onus Listen, on you. We went to a flea market last weekend where they were selling a jarred fetal pig. One of the vendors for $45, had a jar with an actual, legit fetal pig. Yeah, but that never... You don't know that they're not keeping it. They might be. They might. But still, he knew this was not a normal thing to do. Otherwise, he wouldn't have hid them in the wall. Maybe maybe it was just... Dan wanted to buy it, and I said no. Maybe it was just a weird compulsion. To, to, to keep teeth in the wall, Tara? People are crazy. <laughs> How long have we been doing this? People are crazy. That's like... Uh... Maybe he was just too lazy. I mean, back then, they didn't have biohazard waste. No, they burned the shit. Fucking 28. But maybe he just... I don't... I would like to point out, somebody had a jar of something else on a radiator. So, teeth. Not that weird. Oh, the My Little Pony? Yeah. In the jar of comb? Yeah. Yeah, that's worse. 
Well. What about, what if you had like a jar of teeth soaked in cum on your radiator? <laughs> that would be worse. Moving right along. <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere to go but up from that one. Um, so everyone sent us this and everyone's talking about this and, you know, I don't have kids, but I do have friends who have kids and they, they like taking the kids out for the trick or treat and dressing them up, giving them neat costume and they like dressing up too. And yeah. it's, it's fun. It's good. It's a nice thing. We're, we're going out Wednesday night. I'm going to refine this look, get the hair bigger. This, this is not what you do with you. This is how you ruin your child's Halloween. This, this, you are the worst person. Oh, no. The worst. Yeah. Man who dressed his child as Hitler <sighs> complains of ill treatment at trick-or-treat oh. event. Were you, were you treated like a lesser person because of your appearance? Tell me more about that, Hitler. And I'm, I'm purposefully not showing the picture of the kid. Yeah. Because, yeah. Because it was, he, he didn't pick it. Kids like three or something? Yeah. And Owensboro, oh, five. five. Owensboro man is taking heat online after complaining about how he was treated when he and his five year old son went to a Halloween event dressed in Nazi garb. I want to point out, like, this isn't, like, if you look at this shit, like, the kid, it looks like just a suit jacket that they put an armband on. That yeah. dad? That's not. From Spirit Halloween. That is the worst cosplayer. He took there's time and effort. And shit. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's effort put into that, <clears throat> which means he probably didn't just throw this together. Brian Goldbach took to Facebook to vent that for he and his family attended the Trail of Treats in Owensburg Thursday night. He posted a photograph of himself and his son in which he wore what appeared to be a Nazi officer's uniform. The boy wore a suit, swastika armband, and Hitler-style mustache. <clears throat> Tonight, grown adults threaten a child over his costume, threaten his mom and dad as well, threaten to rip his off outfit off of him, screaming obscenities, scaring a small child. You knew you were doing a visceral, horrible thing. Now, I will say, there's no excuse for screaming at a small child. Even if the kid picked that outfit, that kid is five. And he, yes. what, he thinks what's cool is whatever his parents think is cool. So yelling at a five-year-old is some bullshit. And I, I want to, to... Yelling at the five-year-old's dad, totally cool. And I want to point out his la the, from his post, quote, uh, we had the displeasure of dealing with the fruits of the so-called, quote, tolerant left. <sighs> Shut up. Shut up. You're, you're just. <sighs> this is not a thing people do. No. This is not a normal behavior. No. This is deliberate. Oh, good. Jesus Christ. Hey, what are you going to be for Halloween? I'm going to be Pol Pot. This isn't a fun thing. Sadly. Horrible genocidal dictators. Sadly. If you did that, no one would know who you were. Yeah. We completely forgot about that one. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 just you and Jello Biafra like, are the only people who know who Pol Pot It's not a genre of anymore. costume that people do. No, it's not a genre. It's this, this is, this, god damn. You've ruined your child's Halloween. That, that's, that's what really is. Yeah, is, you're the guy who ruined your child's Halloween. That's, Not any of those other people. That's, you, the fucking Nazi. Yeah, that, that's really the thing that's just... Because I'm sorry, uh, that outfit is, like, fitted and adorned and carefully crafted, and you probably already fucking had that thing. I mean, I've, I've seen parents who, like, have, who want to take their kids out for... They also want to dress up, too, and they have really elaborate costumes. Oh, Yeah. And I've seen those wonder adorable combinations. They dress up their, their kid like uh Leia and they dress in the Darth Vader outfit. See, it's 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 cute. Who has a lovely wife and four kids, and every year they do some kick-ass mm -hmm. family costume. Last year they were the Incredibles. 
year before they were all Star Wars characters and the newborn was Yoda. Like, they do some cool shit. This is not cool shit. This is not cool shit. You wanted to go out dressed like this. You just, this, this is not. And, like, I'm the kid... I'm not even saying historical. My mom sent me out trick or treating in 1984 as Geraldine Ferraro. <laughs> so, like, I'm not even saying historical figures are off the table. No. So, for all you people that are like, "Why is terror feminist now?" <laughs> not a new thing. Not a new. Yeah, the only person who ruined your kid's Halloween, you knew this was going to cause cause an incident. You knew he was going to be upset. You knew people are going to be very upset and angry about this. Yeah. And if you didn't, you're a moron. You did this for you. Yeah. And you dragged your five-year-old into it. Well done. Well, well done. Well done. Uh, you, well, well done. Just fuck off. Asshole. Well, this one is, uh, this might be, I don't know, Tara, you, you like the supernatural show type stuff, the, the Ghost Hunters thing. Um, maybe you can can uh, ascertain the veracity of this gentleman's claim. Um, uh, let's see here. A, uh, is a ghost named Bill in the Indian oh. Riven County Jail? A 46-year-old Indian uh, River County Jail inmate on October 7th reported to investigators that a, quote, a ghost named Bill told him to swing a broom at a television to get out of jail. Vincent Foggy is accused of taking a long-handled broom and hitting a flat-screen television in the jail. Security footage shows Foggy swinging the broom at a flat screen valued at about $300 on the wall. Foggy said deputies, uh, he was, F Foggy, uh, Foggy said to deputies, he was told a ghost name was told by a ghost named Bill to swing the broom at the television in order to get out of jail. Rather than be freed from incarceration, Foggy was arrested on a criminal mischief charge in connection with the alleged TV bashing. It wasn't immediately clear on whether a ghost named Bill shares any criminal liability. I it, Bill Bill doesn't know fuck about giving legal advice. Bill is shitty with the law. Yeah. Bill is a, a ghost named Maybe Bill. that's why Bill the ghost is in jail. Because he sucks at getting out of jail. And maybe you shouldn't take his advice at getting out of jail since he's dead and still there. That's true. He has, he's, he's, he's been there how long and he still hasn't gotten out and he's even right. dead. And he's fucking dead. He could walk, no one can see Bill. He can walk out anytime he wants. And he still hasn't gotten out. I don't think he's a great source on how to get out of jail, personally. Bill, Bill is not helping you. No. Bill is a bad ghost. I mean, he might be a great ghost. <laughs> he's bad at getting out of jail. He's bad at getting out of jail. I don't, I just... Uh, do you really think he was going to sell this story? I, I, no, considering where we are these days, I'm sure someone would go, well, hold on. We can't just dismiss this out of hand. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. We were just watching, I don't know if you watched the show Lore. No. They did an episode on Robert the doll that's apparently a very famous haunted doll. And it was just a doll named Robert that fucked up everybody's life. I somehow doubt this. Now he's in a museum now, and if you don't ask permission to take his picture before you take his picture, like they have this museum has like hundreds of letters from people apologizing to the doll because then they went home and like had a car accident or lost their job or like went bankrupt or whatever <laughs> because they didn't ask Robert's permission to take his picture. I, I don't, I don't think those two were connected, per se. But you don't know. Yes, I do. I'm just saying ghosts don't have to have really interesting names. Like, if your ghost isn't named Thaddeus Von Stein, <laughs> that doesn't mean he's not real. Vigo the Carpathian. That's that's the ghost name. That's a name for you there. Maybe he died in 1984 and your ghost is named Chad. And he just <laughs> pops the collars on all your shirts while you're walking around. Like... That's the worst ghost. That's the worst ghost in the world. Your ghost is James Spader from Pity and Pretty and Pink. Good luck. Uh, all right. Next up, we got something a little bit different. 
Um, this is this is from the uh, how how do you do fellow kids department. Um, so Pokemon Go apparently is making a resurgence. Um, Did it go away? Well, it kind of lulled, but now it's picking back up, especially now that Nintendo has announced the new Switch Pokemon game will interact with Pokemon Go. Oh. So you'll be able to use the, the critters you catch there in the new Switch game. Oh, okay. I was like, are so, you supposed to carry your Nintendo around? Because that doesn't seem... No, you catch them with your phone and then you can play with them on the Nintendo. It's kind of... I don't, I don't understand it. But, uh, and not to be outdone, others have seen this trend, this 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 hold it has on a young population. On, on the youth. And decided they're going to try to uh, capture this market as well. Vatican releases Pokemon Go clone for Catholics. Oh no! A third-party developer with papal blessings from the Vatican has released a free smartphone app called JC Go. JC stands for Jesus Christ. <laughs> a game that's similar to Pokemon Go, but different in other ways. In JC Go, instead of catching Pokemon, players have to roam around the world to find Catholic saints and other biblical characters to join their evangelization team. Instead of attacking them, you have to answer some of their questions before they can join your team. There are so many bad jokes I'm not going to make. <laughs> it's, like, it's like so cute, but so dorky. Like, oh. my nephew's in Catholic school, and I would not be surprised if they require him to get this oh. and make it, like, a thing. Because I can see, like, if when I can see if I was in catechism now, then being like, okay, download this app. This is what we're going to do to learn about the saints. There are also various items sprinkled around JC Go that allow players to eat, drink, and pray. Doing any of these actions will increase your stats. <laughs> you can even donate to the app and receive in-game in currency in return. Oh my god, the Vatican has microtransactions. <laughs> well, uh, they only did. They always did. They just used to call them plenary indulgences. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, someone makes a good point. Oh. Saints stories aren't necessarily... A lot of the saints, like, their lives aren't kid-friendly stories. Oh, no. didn't a lot of them have to be martyred? Yeah. Yeah, to be a saint, you have like, to... Like, fucking horribly. Yeah. That's not for the kids. I'm thinking they probably gloss over some of that. Yeah, you know, maybe... Like, just, I am the patron saint of X, and I come from Y. Yay! And no mention that, you know, Joan of Arc got, like, um... Burned at the stake. We'll just leave that out. I, she just got a really deep tan. Yeah. You know, it's... I just... Wow. You know what I'm reminded of? Do you remember back in the 90s? The whole idea of the cool skateboard preacher. Yeah. The, the, you know, you'd have some... Catholics don't have those. No, we don't. That's that's entirely like an evangelical, like the yeah, Protestant Catholics, Baptist. Catholic priests don't give a fuck if you think they're cool. I, because I, cool is probably sinful. You know, it's really righteous, guys. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Cool. So this is... The this is saved. You out there hitting the board for the Lord. This is this is the this is the new hip with the kids I mean, version of that. I kind of like it. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> if I had something like this as a kid, I might know my saints better than I do now. <laughs> oh well, you know, I mean that that's could you just imagine how disappointed the kid's gonna be when their mom's like, "We got you a phone so you could play a new game." They're like, "Oh." It's Jesus. Yeah, I was that kid, though. What does Jesus evolve into? And can I fight with him? Where's the gym? Like, we didn't have the advent calendar. We had the advent wreath. 
And we didn't turn on the Christmas lights on the tree or the house until Christmas Eve, because the point of the Christmas lights is to light the way for the Lord. When you go around doing battle with Jesus, does he evolve into the Holy Ghost and then the, the <laughs> Father? Maybe. <laughs> Like, yeah, how do they level them? How do you level? Yeah. Because, oh like, God. that could get dicey. Uh, I, I, I kind of dig it. This next but one. But I was that kid that had, like, the Catholic version of cool stuff. I think I actually did have a Learn the Saints board game. Uh, well, all right. This next one, before we, we get to it, I'm going to quiz the chat here. Speaking of asking them questions. Does anyone know what the Magna Carta is? Pretty sure Dan does. Yeah. There you go. He's a dirty Brit. Let's see. Okay. If people in the channel are just saying, yeah, I know. That's that's about it. They... Can anyone tell us? All right. Limits the monarch's power. Um some people. I know what it is, but fuck if I can describe it accurately. <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> limits kings in taxing. Yeah, it limits the power of the English royalty. It was the Magna Carta. That's that, that's that all acapella metal band, right? No. The Magna Carta, pretty much it was the way the king at the time kept the fucking country from tearing him to pieces. He pretty much said, look, everyone has to follow the law, even me. There are established consequences and all this stuff. This is how we're going to do it now. Stop trying to kill me. So, uh, yeah, it was kind of important. And you know what? Um, Magna Carta is a Jay-Z album. Not incorrect. <laughs> Man arrested for trying to smash Magna Carta out of its glass case with a hammer. Oh, Pictures released by Wiltshire Police revealed glass protecting the document was hit at least three times, and he was not fucking around, because look at that shit. Yeah. Um, other visils, visitors to the cathedral prevented further damage by restraining the man and then performed a citizen's arrest. Uh, a witness described seeing people coming out of the cathedral after alarms sounded. Um... The 1215 manuscript, described as the best original out of four copies that were made, was enclosed in a gas glass case in the cathedral. Now, first, did anyone check if this was Nicolas Cage? Because that seems like it might He's explain just lost his grip on reality. He's in a lot of debt. <clears throat> He's like gorilla filming a new national treasure film. Um, but no, secondly... If you smash the Magna Carta, it doesn't go away. No. It's not I like, mean, it's not law anymore. That irreplaceable piece of history goes yes. away. That historical artifact goes away. It's it's not like delete. It's not like you, un, it's not like an undo button. You know, we, we still have, you know, all the... I mean, let's be honest, he probably wanted to sell it. Yeah, okay, you probably want to say. But how do you, how do you fence the Magna Carta? <laughs> who's who's who do you go to to say, "Look, I've got a really hot document. I need to see if you can sell this." What That's is so it? Funny. If this was stolen, yeah. The go. Oh yeah, I, I just found it. I, I just dropped it. I good god. What the fuck were you thinking? It wasn't going to work out, bro. They're not going to be happy about that shit. With a hammer. He was, like, not even trying to be all, like, Tom Cruise in it with the with the Mission Impossible shit. No, no, no. He just walked up with a hammer. It's like, this will work. I've got a good plan. I'm sad that Meghan Markle's not allowed to wear brightly colored nail polish anymore, too. <laughs> but the monarchy is what it is, man. Uh, like, th that's why Ireland left. Is it just not, like, not because of Meghan Markle's nail polish, but, you know, because of monarchy. What are you going to do, man? I'm going to hit it with a hammer. That's not a very good plan. Yes, but it's simplicity is what carries sure it. sure this wasn't Banksy? <laughs> sure it was fucking Banksy. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? We don't know. It might have been Banksy. Motherfucker. 
Oh, uh, not happy with him. He was going to sell it a piece at a time. The Magna a la carta. Oh. <laughs> Jiggly Saint. That, that well was done, awful. Jiggly Saint. That was awful. <laughs> that was fucking awful. Oh, one more tonight. And this is, of course, of course, a fucking course. Fucking, of course, as always. <laughs> Cali Fornaye. Hey, Tara, it happened again. Now, you're going to be this guy's biggest cheerleader because you always are. Man sets California home on fire after using blowtorch to kill uh, spiders. So many people sent me this, except I want to give you guys a little Twitter tip when I shut this lady up. If your version of sending me a thing is just replying to the thing, with my Twitter tag, I'm not going to go back and look for what you're sending me. No. Like, retweet the thing and tag me. Or just whatever. But, like, if if all I get is a mention with my name, I'm not going to go back and do the work. I'm just, I'm lazy. Fresno, a man who was house-sitting for his parents in California, set the home on fire after he used a blowtorch to kill spiders. Firefighters say the man was trying to kill black widow spiders. Okay. They're venomous. <laughs> but so fine. Made it out of the home safely. No, I knew you were going to defend him. No one else is home at the time. Fire caused damage to the second story of the house in the attic. 29 firefighters responded to the two alarm fire. Though the exact cause has not been officially determined, fire crews believe the blowtorch is to blame. They're venomous. Yeah, and there are things that don't cause fire that will still kill them. But can you be sure? <laughs> like, have you ever stepped on a bug and you think it's dead and then that fucker starts moving with fire? You're sure. You can call a professional if you're that concerned. I mean, generally, I call in either Dottie, who rips all of its legs off and then tortures it to death, or Dan, who takes it outside. I used <laughs> Ashley the tag go, hello, Dad, I'm in jail. <laughs> I'm in jail. I like it here. Anymore. I like it here. It's nice. I just it okay, you know what? When your kid is ten, you expect shit like this. Do you? Kids play with fire. Especially I did. I mean my dad was a fireman though. I did. I played with I fucking you, Yeah, you did. Can of Lysol and a box of matches. How do you still have fingers? <laughs> <laughs> when you were a kid, you played with... But when you're grown up... I didn't. But maybe that's because my dad was a fireman. I don't know. I didn't feel... And we, I think we've covered this. That it's boys. Yeah. It's, Little it's, girls don't feel a weird compulsion to burn shit. <laughs> It's, it's, I can't I can't argue with that. I, I I knew little girls when I was at that age. None of them were interested in fire. And I thought they were weird. Come to find out, they were just ahead of the curve. <clears throat> so, yeah. Now I look forward to getting comments from 72 women that are like, dead chicks, I love fire. Cool. <laughs> I'm saying stereotypically. Oh, I just, you're already getting it in the channel, so. Guys... You put you punch the button. No, it's just you know what when you're like ten, maybe you could understand your kid setting the carpet on fire. When you're like in your retirement age, you I your... mean, I did melt our television with a space heater when I was a kid. Well, I mean, when you're like this old and you're you get a call like, "Hey, Dad, I set the house on fire." Uh. But see, there was a spider. There was a spider, so, you know. So, you can see where I'm coming from here. Also, this is California. What's been happening in California lately? Yeah. Might not want to fuck around with fire. Look, if you want, if you need fire in California, just walk outside. Take, like, ten steps in any direction. Something's on fire. I don't think the problem was a shortage of fire. No. You don't need to bring the fire inside, though. There's already fire. So you're saying he should have brought the spiders outside. There you go. Them. 
There you go. I, you know what? That's fine. That that is actually that's a little too closely involved with spiders <laughs> for my taste personally, especially venomous ones. Well, you know why? Why go through all the trouble of bringing the fire inside when you have fire conveniently located everywhere you look in California? You well, pick you, pick a direction. Something's on fire. You have spiders. <laughs> Just how do you, how do you explain this to your insurance agent? Yeah, my uh, my adult son was watching my house and uh, he saw a spider, so he burned the top story down. The roof, the roof, the roof is on fire. We don't need no water. Let, Let the motherfucker burn. You know there are people watching who don't get that reference. I know. I know. The first, babies. the first thing we learned this week is um, leave the fire outside. <laughs> Just leave it outside. Even if there are spiders. Even if there are spiders. Call a professional. Fire is a wild animal. <laughs> Don't feed it. Don't feed the fire. No. Don't take it home. Don't what make it, it a nice... What if it follows you home? What if it follows you home, you have a problem. Um, we've learned that, uh, if you smash an ancient document, that doesn't mean it stops working. And you're probably not going to be able to sell it. No, you're no, no one's going to buy the Magna. It's like, hey, buddy, you want to buy a Magna Carta? <laughs> you want to buy a declaration limiting the authority? it back to the queen. Yeah, it's like, it's, it's, it's. it's She's not no. going to be like, oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you found it. I should make you a knight of the realm. No. We, we've we learned that uh, there are there is nothing that the church won't, won't attempt to be hip with the kids. I think it's cute. Tara, you're not the Pokemon Go audience. In no. fact, we have aged up to the point where we're, you know, when, when you're in your 20s, you're like, that's a stupid idea. When you're in your 30s, you're like, oh, what are they doing? Now we get to our age and we're like, that's kind of cute. Sure, maybe the kids would like that. We're old, Tara. I'm not saying the kids would like it. I think the kids will think it's dorky. But I'm saying, growing up in my <laughs> super Catholic household, I'm pretty sure if I had a smartphone, I would have had that game. <laughs> Because I had Discover Ireland, the Irish tourism board game, and I'm pretty sure I did have either a card game or a board game that taught you all the saints. We've learned that uh, if uh, if a ghost tells you to break something to get out of jail, the ghost is not helping you. The ghost doesn't know how to get out of jail. Um, think about think about the source of the information. We've learned that uh, it's it. There's really nothing good comes out of dressing your child up as Hitler. No. And finally, we've learned that when your dentist asks what you want done with your teeth, make sure you watch him put that shit in the garbage can. I mean, are you worried about it? Does anybody miss those teeth from 1928? That's just... That's... I, you know, I'm, I'm, I wonder what... The, I'm kind of now thinking... What does my dentist do when I say I don't want my teeth? They're Probably supposed to get ass. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what I expected. 